When you want to find the probability of a number of events occurring within a specific time frame, uh, you're most likely going to be using a Poisson distribution. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can implement this within Python through seven different examples. We're going to take a look at using the libraries NumPy as well as SciPy, looking at CDF and PMF, and then rounding out this video by plotting two different graphs. But before we do start coding in Python, I do want to go over a little bit more information about the Poisson distribution. All right, so let's take a look at a little more information about the Poisson distribution. So just going to reiterate the definition. So the Poisson distribution is a probability distribution that describes the number of events occurring within a fixed interval of time or space. So let me give you some examples, right? The number of subscribers joining a YouTube channel in a day. Which reminds me, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so. Uh, website visitors per hour and then chargebacks per quarter. So it deals with the count of events that are non-negative integer values, right? You can't have a negative amount of visitors to a website, right? You can't have a negative amount of chargebacks. And because of this integer value, this is going to be discrete. Now, a few terms that you guys should know uh, before jumping into the Python code. So lambda, which you'll all see, see represented as mu. So this is the average rate at which events occur within a given interval. So just to give you an example of subscribers joining YouTube channel, right now my channel gets about 40 subscribers per day. So because of that, my lambda value would be 40. Now the K value is the number of events you're trying to calculate the probability for. So let's say I wanted to see 50 subscribers in a day, right? I wanted to look at the Poisson distribution and either calculate like the PMF or CDF based around that. That's 50 subscribers, right? Let's say I wanted to do the opposite. I want to take a look at 25 subscribers, right? What's the probabilities behind getting 25 subscribers? Again, that is going to be the K value. So lambda is the average, you know, I'm averaging 40 per day. K is going to be that value that I'm testing that average against. And I want to see the probability. Again, you can literally have lambda and K be the same, or you could have those different, right? As in this example with 50 and 25. So the two value, two uh, probabilities that we're going to be taking a look at. First one is the probability mass function. So this is the exact probability of the number of events happening. And then also we're going to take a look at the CDF, which is the cumulative distribution function. So the probability that a specific value or less or equal to to the number of events. Uh, down below also are two different graphs, which we are going to be plotting. So with this out of the way, I think we're ready to start the Python coding. All right, so let's start by bringing in a few imports. So import numpy as np, then from scipy.stats, import son, then import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, import seaborn as sns. So all those, and uh, I don't think we really have the import in anything else. So let's take a look at example one. So example one, generate random Poisson from NumPy. And the way that we do that, let's first set our lambda value. So lambda value equals five. Then what we're gonna set is our size. So we'll say size equals 10. And then we'll say Poisson Then we'll say is Poisson samples equals NP dot random Poisson. And then we'll say lamb equals lambda value up there. And then size equals size. All right, and then do go down new line, and you can see if we go here to print and we print out our samples. Look, six, five, four, seven, seven, five, six, three, and three. I will be graphing things a little bit later. So let's jump into our second example, which we're going to generate this with the help of SciPy. So I'll go over here, and instead of from NumPy, I'll say SciPy, and what we'll do is also mentioned the system too. So literally go over here and we use part of this and we'll say some samples two and we'll start with 
Poisson like this, and then we'll do dot RVS, and then we'll have to set our move value. And what we're gonna set that to is our lambda value, which we already had from over here. So we'll say that. Then we'll have size, and uh, again, we'll be size. I guess I should have kept the parameters from earlier. And then lastly, you can also set a random state if you want. So if you wanna replicate this, uh, we'll say random state, random state equals 11. And I should mention also, uh, you can get the same exact results from NumPy. I just didn't set my random state above. Oh, you can do that as well. So there we go. Okay, and we can take a look at our samples too. And I just go over here to print and check this out, 1472523933 and seven. And just to show you guys as well, we can find our mean and standard deviation. Uh, these are pretty easy to do, right? So what we'll do is just print this out. You can grab the mean, right? And go over here, drop mean. And ideally, right, we have a mean value of 4.3. And you can see that's a little bit off from our lambda value, but we have a size of 10. So uh, it's supposed to be far off when we have a little bit of values over here in our size. As the size gets larger, we should have something a little bit closer. And we can also find our standard deviation quite easily. Just put over here STD and you can see 2.49. Awesome. All right, so these next two examples are gonna be taking a look at the PMF before jumping into some CDF uh, examples, but Real quick, I don't have a video yet on PMF on the channel. It is my backlog and I'll have it out soon. But PMF essentially is the probability where a discrete variable is gonna be an exact value, which is really helpful with a Poisson. So let's take a look at those examples. We'll look at looking at one value and then also multiple values. So uh, we'll set that up over here. Example three, Poisson. PMF single value, all right. And what we'll do is we'll create a new Lambda value, Lambda value, and we'll say this is equal to five. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do also, and I need to run this cell, uh, we'll set a K value over here, which is gonna be our number of events. So we'll say K equals three, and then let's find our probability. So prob equals, and we'll go over here to Poisson, dot pmf and inside over here you put k your events and then also your lambda value so we'll have both of those and let's print that out so prints and prints out our ability and you can see 0 0.14 now if you want to look at multiple values all we have to do is pass in our samples so what we can do is we'll say example four, example four, PMF multiple values, and we'll get a, a list this time rather than a single value, but we'll say prob two equals, and we'll use the same thing over here, right? So what we're gonna have is instead of K, we're gonna pass in our samples. So we could pass in one or two. I'm gonna pass in our first samples over here, so pass in on samples, and we're gonna keep the same lambda value when we're gonna assume it's five, right? And what you'll see next, if we go over here to prints, and this is the probability for each of these. So you can see the first one is 0 0.146, then 0 0.175, 175, 0 0.104, 104, 175, 146, 1403, and 1043 and 1043. Last three have the same probability as this one over here where we put a K value of three. Let's just scroll up over here and you can see our last three values are also three. So that lines up specifically. So showed you we can take a look at one K value or we can take a look at the samples we distributed, created a little bit above, pass that in as well as your lambda value and you can get the probability for each of those. Now, well, let's take a look at our CDF. Now, the CDF is the cumulative distribution function. So it essentially gives you the probability of being at a specific point 
or less. So overall probabilities are gonna increase quite a bit because you don't have to be on that exact value. So let's again, take a look at two examples based around that. So our first one is gonna be CDF at a single point. So this is gonna be example five, CDF single points. And all we have to do on that side of things, uh, we still have, I'm gonna keep the same Lambda value and K and I'll just say prob CDF. And just change your Poisson instead of PMF, just put in CDF over here. And you'll see that this is way higher, right? Prints and the probability it's three or less. And you can see it's 0.26 or 26% in comparison where we were at 14%. Now we can do the same exact thing and take a look at our list, right? So CDF, and we'll say multiple points, so multiple points. And again, same thing, right? So go over here and just change this out to our CDF. And this is what example six, I believe. So we'll say probability CDF two. And then we'll just print that out. And you can see these are gonna be much, much larger. You can see 0 0.76, 0 0.61, 0 0.44. And the reason why 0.76 is so high, right? We go back over here. It's a value of six. So you have everything six or below. And then you'll see when we go to seven, right? It's 0 0.86. So again, if you wanna learn a little bit more about CDF, I have a full video on that. I highly recommend you check it out. And I will have one on PMF in the future. I promise you it's in my backlog and it'll be recorded within a month or so of this being up. All right, so for our last two examples, we're gonna be plotting two different graphs. We're gonna be taking a look at a stem plot as well as a histogram. So let's start off with example, I believe we're on seven now, uh, which is gonna be our stem plot. So example seven, which is a stem plot. And uh, let's get going with that. So first I'm gonna set our Lambda value, which again is our average. I'm gonna set this to five and uh, we've already done this a few times, but just to have a refresher for our graph, then we'll set our K values, so K values, and we'll say equals NP dot arrange, and we'll have values zero through 15. So zero through 15 like that. And then what we'll do is set our PMF values. So PMF values, and we'll say is equal to sun, and then the PMF, pass in K values, right, and Lambda, it should be pretty familiar, right? So we're gonna find the K values, right? Zero through 15. And we're gonna use our Poisson PMF, which I showed you a little bit earlier, right? Single value versus also multiple values. So we have our PMF values over here. And then now we can plot it. So we'll say plt.stem. And what we'll have over here is our K values first. So pass in our K values. And then we'll pass in our PMF values. So pass in F values, then plt.title, and we'll say Poisson distribution. Then we can set our X label, plt.x label, and then we'll say number of events. events. Then we'll set our Y label. And, it, and I misspelled label, so label like that. We'll say Y label. And our Y label is gonna be our probability, right? What our PMF is showing us, probability. And uh, we just have to do plt.show. So what this is awesome about, and we'll let this run. So you can see our value of five, which is our average, right? And that's right over here. And then you can see all the other values, zero through 15, right? And the probability we get that. And how do we get the probability? Well, we use PMF, which gives us the exact probability for a specific point. Now, you could also build another graph for CDF. And, you know, it's going to go upwards, right? And that's because the probability will increase as you increase your number of events on a CDF. But for our 
PMF right here, right? This almost looks like a normal distribution, although it does have that skew on the side, so it's not gonna be exactly like that. Um, but now, what I wanna take a look at is a histogram, and that's gonna be our last example. So example eight, which is our histogram. And what we'll take a look at is, uh, we'll set a sample size this time. So sample size, we'll say a thousand, good with that. And then what we'll do next is we'll say data equals np.random.poisson. We'll pass in our lambda value, which is still gonna be five. So lambda value. And then we'll pass in our sample size, All right? We're just creating a new Poisson. All right, and now let's plot our histogram. So plt.hist, we'll pass in data. Then we'll say bins equals np.arrange above zero through 16. And we'll say minus 0 0.5. Then we can set colors if we want to. So we'll, I'll literally just copy what I had over here in my sample code. So don't want to type all that out. We'll say edge color is black, alpha equals 0 0.7. PLT.title in here over here, we'll say Poisson distribution. So distribution. And then our X label again is gonna be like number of events, right? And honestly, we could copy all this code. So we have X is gonna be number of events and then Y, instead of probability this time, since we're doing histogram, we'll have count. And then we wanna set up ticks. We can say plt.xticks and again, np.range of zero through 15. I think we should be good. So let's just plot this and you, boom, there we go. So again, at five, right? That's where we wanted to have about the average. And you can see over here, more over four than five, but it's pretty close. Again, it's randomized and uh, pretty close also to a normal distribution. Although, right, it goes out over here a little bit, but that's all right. And uh, yeah, that's essentially the Poisson distribution. So to recap, at least on the Python side of things, uh, there's two ways to generate a random Poisson distribution. Uh, we covered both NumPy as well as the SciPy way of it. Then we took a look at both PMF as well as CDF. PMF is if you want to find the probability at a specific point. CDF is if you want to find the probability a point or a little bit earlier. Uh, I showed you how we could do that for a single value or through a list of values so with the list of values being the random Poisson distribution generated a little bit earlier. And lastly, I took a look at two different plots, the first one being a stem plot, and then the second being a histogram. All right, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this statistics video. And if you learned something new, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're uploading three plus videos every single week because it's our goal to hit 100,000 subscribers in 2025. Subscribing is free, and if you want to do it, I appreciate it. Now, if you want to learn even more about statistics within the data science, I have a few videos linked down below in the description, as well as a playlist right over here that I'd recommend that you check out.